Hello and welcome to the question and answer session for Primary Science Getting Started. We hope you've enjoyed being on the course and that you've got lots of useful things out of the sessions. Um, myself and Rachel are going to answer the questions that we've had. We only had a couple of questions this time um, and the first came from one of our participants named Chris. And Chris was asking for advice as a non-specialist science teacher. He really wants to know how to develop his in-depth subject knowledge. Well, that's a really good question, Chris, because um, research from the Wellcome Trust a few years ago actually said, you know, as primary teachers, we're brilliant at what we do, but maybe sometimes our subject knowledge isn't always where we want it to be. And we sort of go, oh, I'm not sure that I'm going to get that right. So we sort of keep back from, from answering those questions or taking our children further. So what's really key is that we as subject teachers, as science teachers, which is a primary school teacher, really are... Uh, we really know our subject knowledge and that we're we're ready to impart that to our children so by upping our own personal subject knowledge that can only help um different ways you can do that um through future learn where you've just done this course there are um quite a number of courses that we have put together through stem learning for subject knowledge so there's um, a chemistry a physics and three biology courses um, the biology was cut into three because it's such a huge area in the primary curriculum so that's a really good first start is to have a look at those three five courses um, and and have a work through those um, they look at the really key subject knowledge that will help you develop that primary science understanding um, other places you can go to if you're looking for further training is actually come on some of the STEM learning face-to-face um, -face residential courses we run from our national centre. Um, uh, there, there's a couple that actually look really specifically at subject knowledge. Um, again, like the Future Learn ones, we've broken them into chemistry, physics and biology. Or there's a, a general one where we're looking for science leaders and how they can develop their own subject knowledge and then impart that onto their, um, their staff and children. Um, if you're looking for resources to support you, um, places like the BEST resources, so BEST were produced by the University of York, um, and they look at the progression through understanding of science concepts. Now, they're aimed not at teaching primary children, but they're aimed at the, the concepts, so, you know, the big ideas behind physics, chemistry and biology, and pulling them apart and what you might need to know first and how you would work through that learning so for your own personal subject knowledge those are great places to have a look at um, uh, reach out cpd is another cpd provider free online that you can look at for if you're teaching a new subject so a new topic and you might want to look in there and it has at the beginning of each topic the subject knowledge that you need to understand um, I know when I first started teaching um, from STEM, I started using the book called Misconceptions in Primary Science. And whereas I thought my subject knowledge was pretty good, when I read that, I'd go, oh, oh. And that was really interesting because it, it highlights a, a misconception that a child might have and then explains the science behind it. So again, if we can never know what we don't know. So, um, you know, you might think, gosh, I really understand that. One that comes to mind was um, the shadows of the moon, you know, the shape of the, the moon through its phases. And I thought I'd got that really clear. I read in that book, Misconceptions, um, about what how actually those shapes of the moon are formed. And it threw me, and I'd got to the age of 40 and didn't, didn't quite understand that. So I guess it's, it's knowing what we don't know. So sort of analysing our subject knowledge and then finding those places that will help to support us to develop our own subject knowledge. So I guess that we're not one teaching misconceptions to our children, but two, we're taking our learning further. Thanks, Karen. Um, and the second question we have is from Jessica, who is asking how to make science more inclusive for um, EAL learners in the classroom. Um, a lot of the strategies um, will be ones that will support all children in your class. So, um, you know, it's it's things, for example, like um, teaching vocabulary, because EAL children will really struggle with a lot of the, the key scientific vocabulary and what it means. But often these topics are new for all children. Um, so actually dealing with how to do this effectively will support the whole of your class. 
Um, and yes, one strategy is you can pre-teach vocabulary with the groups of children who um, have English as a second language or additional language. Um, you could even have a teaching assistant or another adult going out and playing little games with the children to really support their understanding of the key words that you're going to be using in the next science lesson so that when they're in the lesson and you're teaching it with all the rest of the children as well, they'll kind of have their confidence improved and they'll start recognising those words in the contexts in which you're using them. Um, again, using picture prompts, so you have a picture of the vocabulary and the word next to it, so the children are making that link. Um, and it's not just pictures, but actual real objects like real realia, like if you're teaching um, light, you could maybe have things such as a candle, but also a torch. So you're seeing lots of examples of the same um, word, but in a, a sort of similar context. So they're kind of making that link. Um, other things that you can do, uh, you can um, use scientific words and context across the curriculum. So that way, children, all children, as well as your EAL learners, are experiencing that language in contexts in different subjects. And the more times you come across it, the more likely you are, you are going to really understand that. So, for example, if you're um, plotting graphs with data you're collecting in a science investigation and you're using that same kind of um, language in your maths lessons, it will be the children will have experienced it once before. So when they come to do it in their science, it will be familiar to them. So they can focus a lot more on the actual scientific concepts and the words that they're coming across for the first, well, hopefully not for the first time if you've pre-taught it, but um, you know what I mean? It's less for them to actually have to then process. Um, again, another thing you can do is really give that extra bit of thinking time. Um, for EAL children, so they have time to process what you're saying, to try and make sense of it, and then if they're replying, because if you're asking them a question, they've got that time to process and then be able to articulate what they're going to say, first in their own language and then in the, 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 the target language of English. Um, so yeah, and again, that strategy is really key for all teachers, because often, I know that I perhaps did, did it a bit as well. We don't give our children enough time to think. We'll say, oh, you've got two minutes to do that. And then very quickly ask them for answers. So um, it's another key thing to just um, be aware of. Um, so there are, there are a couple of strategies there. Um, we have got a, um, a resource that I can link, link you to on our website, which is 50 ideas for working with EAL children in general. But again, you can adapt these really easily, these strategies for teaching science. Um, also, there's a couple of articles um, from the, um, the ASE uh, where teachers have actually tried to teach um, science in a different language, um, which is a quite interesting one to look at. So children, they've, they've actually come up with the idea that actually, um, because you're doing it in a really concise, clear way, children have learnt the science much better in a in a different language because you've had to be really clipped and concise with your own um, language because it's not your first language. So that's an interesting one to read. Um, and there's another one that looks about visualisation and how that works well. Um, so yes, lots of ideas and other areas that you can have a look at to support you with that one. So um, there were only the two questions. So thanks again for coming on this course and hopefully we'll see you lots more either on our courses remotely or up, at, uh, up in York or on one of your local courses. <laughs>